ever been out camping or overlanding on a long trip and you run out of water? Hey everyone and welcome back to OTA or if you're new to the channel Overland Travel Adventures. Today we're going to solve our major water problem in the Alu cab um, on the Toyota Tundra, the Overland Tundra build as I fondly call it. Uh, we're going to install a water tank and we're going to do a few things different. Alrighty, this is the Alu cab water tank that fits on the back wall of the LU cabin. It is a little over 13 gallons and mounts very easy. And you can see on the bottom left and right, there are uh, holes there for brass fittings. So we're gonna use uh, some hoses and some fittings there. So this is all the stuff and a few other things that you get with the LU cabin kit. Um, you've got the brackets to mount it. You got the bars to hold it in place, all your screws and nuts to put it in place. You've got the spigot that comes with it and the hose and the breather hose, very important. But what we're going to do a little bit different is we're going to install some insulation on the back wall and we're going to install this water pump on one side to be able to get water out of it and pump it to the hot water heater, which we'll install later because we've got to figure out how to do that. So one of the key things you want to do when you get a new tank in is you want to prep it. You're going to wash it out and make sure there's no sediment inside. I just took a look in this tank and as high quality as this tank is and the manufacturing of it, there's always going to be plastic sediment inside. So I'm going to take a minute, squirt water through these holes, wash it out through the big hole in the bottom and just try to get as much out as I can. This process could take several washes. It could be very really quick. It really just depends on the tank that you get. Okay, we got the tank cleaned out. The next test we're gonna do is testing the seals. Definitely don't wanna install it and have it leaking on you. So as I mentioned before, I wanna be able to put a valve here where I can shut the water off in case I need to do any maintenance to any hoses or if anything's leaking, I can shut the water off at the source. What I've chosen is to go with this valve here, which is a half turn, makes it real easy to go on and off. And with this half inch, fitting here and this seal it should be nice and tight now I've gone with brass fittings because I'm doing metal on metal I want to match the metal so I'm gonna put some thread on this and it should seal up properly and I'll do the same to the other side okay water is tested no leaks everything's flowing just fine so one of the things I'm gonna do differently is I'm going to take this sound deadening insulation material and I'm going to mount it on this back wall behind the tank hopefully protecting it a little bit better from the cold because this is just you know thin aluminum I'm going to go ahead and cut this to fit and then use this roller to roll it all on now it doesn't have to be perfect but it has to be in pretty good So I strongly recommend that you download the instructions from the LUCAB website for this particular tank and follow them exactly because it gives you a pretty mapped out process. One of the main steps that you do is this bracket, this bar here, has the mount up here with these brackets. So this bar will hold the top of the tank in place and then the tank will fit right in here get those uh, bolts in place and get these brackets in place so we can get this going and then fit the water tank in and adjust it all together. To get these M uh, nuts in the uh, screws, or get these, get these bolts in the holes, you have to remove the two bottom brackets so you can't get access to where the uh, hole is where the bolts go in and then go up to the brackets. So just remember to do that first. So when putting in the brackets to hold up the bar, you put the big slot up and the three holes against the panel here and we'll slide bolts in to match that and line them up once the bolts are in place washer washer and bolt bolt now that I've got both brackets in place I'm gonna set the bar on there tighten it down a little bit and then I'm gonna put the water tank in and adjust that all together to make sure that everything fits snug now to get the screws in here these end caps have to pop off. Okay, let's pop a tank in here and see how it fits. 
So, slight revelation on doing a pre-fit. This bar has to go up higher. So these upper brackets that stabilize the, the tent itself, the cabin itself, have to come off. And so I'm gonna remove everything, drop the bar down, take all that off, and then this can fit in here solid and hopefully give enough clearance for the valves and everything as well. Plus the air breather up top has to be able to have a hose that comes across and that um, can breathe properly when you're trying to get water out of it. Break time. Lessons learned along the way. Don't tighten anything down and just be patient. Now let's talk about brackets. This bracket goes on the bottom. You'll notice it has two holes and overlaps this bar right here in the bottom section. And this piece goes behind the tank, so it kind of sits in just like that. And there are four of those. This bracket with the three slots here goes up on top and it goes over the bar just like that with this in the back. Both of these brackets on the bottom and the top then form a latch, a, a system that this goes over the water tank in between the grooves of the water tank. So you have this whole thing basically holds the water tank in after these brackets are put on. Then from there, it's gonna be off to the plumbing. Okay, these bottom brackets go on here like this, but the key is these type of bolts with this rounded flathead go on the inside here. And then these bolts have to fit into the track. And then you fit these bolts in through these holes. So I'm just gonna tighten those down where they can slide. But these bolts have to go in before you can bolt these down because then when the water tank sets in and this bar comes over the top, it fits right there. My live mic died, so hopefully this audio comes out good. Let's check in on where we're at now with the project. We've got the bar on top installed. Had to take it down and put it back up uh, once because I didn't have it adjusted right. <clears throat> Right below that, um, you see the brackets here, the four across the top. They go underneath the bar, bolting up to it. Key to remember that. And because uh, if you try to put it in the bar or over the bar or whatever, it doesn't line up right. The, the, the spacing doesn't line up. It all makes sense now whenever you, you know, do it three times. Um, so the next step, which is to put the water tank on. <coughs> put these brackets here in place to hold the water tank and then um, adjust anything and then tighten it down um, lock it in place okay and these brackets here should hold it pretty strong this is a 13.2 gallon tank or a 50 liter tank which comes out to approximately 110 pounds fully loaded uh, so these brackets are going to be real strong um, let's get this other bracket on and then we will uh, Call it a night. Now the bracket is kind of tricky. You gotta put these bolts in these holes. And so what I do is I lay the bracket flat, put the bolts in the holes, just lay them right there because these can push out the back, roll it up, and then the bolts are there. Stick your finger behind it. Get the washer and get the nut on it then that bracket can just kind of hang there while you get the other two bolts at the top secured one key thing is to leave the brackets a little loose so you can shuffle them around there a little bit these bolts here are still loose i let this bracket loose just because I want to make sure I get an exact fit. Update. So we got the water pump mounted. A hose is going to go from here to here and then we'll just turn this on when we want water. And um, then from here water will go down that wall and down to the back wall there where the spigot will come out the back side. Now if we hang the hot water heater on this back panel and put a cover over it or put it in a hard case 
Then all we have to do is connect a hose from the water spigot to the hot water from the hot water out of the hot water heater <clears throat> out to either the shower or the sink, whatever we're doing. Now the plan to power the pump is to take this, connect it to here, and then use this on and off switch to wire it all the way over into this fuse panel where I'll match a fuse and a ground and that way I can uh, reach in, just turn the pump on and off whenever we need it. We'll see how good that works. We've got our hose hooked up from our water tank, from the water tank to the back of the uh, cabin here where I just got the hose hanging out the door. I'm not gonna connect that um, faucet in just yet. Still actually waiting on getting it in from um, uh, Amazon. But <clears throat> what we wanna do along the way is we've already pressure tested our connections here and here outside the cabin and found those to be good. We're going to put water in the tank, verify it's not leaking one more time, and then pressure test the whole system uh, using this Jackery battery and the pump to make sure that uh, we're not gonna spew water everywhere and make a mess. Wish me luck. Okay, that's enough for a test. Let's wire up this puppy. I have left the connector to the water pump. What that allows me to do is disconnect this and replace the water pump if I need to. So that makes it pretty easy to switch out parts and be flexible with things. Got the trusty blowtorch. Let's see if we can get this happen. On and off switch, wired into the negative and the positive, the yellow wired into the power going back to the water pump and Okay, we've got our wires in place, we've got our pump mounted, we got our line ran here behind me. All we got to do is put the um, spigot in the back here, which I've got those coming in from Amazon today. All right, now for the last phase of the project, we've got to drill a hole here to be able to fit this in and connect the hose to it so the water can just you know come out the back side the way we want it. I like the half turn here, so it's nice and easy. It's not a big turn, 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 turn kind of thing. It's nice and quick and easy. It's got the PEX B connector on it, half inch. And so what we're going to do is use this drill bit. You can get them at any Lowe's or Home Depot, but it's gonna cut the center out and be able to allow the uh, connector to Go right in there on the hose, and then that'll all fit together, and we'll have water coming out of the back side of the cabin. So let's get the drilling. And that's how you tear up aluminum. Let me clean the hole a little bit. Okay, get a good mark here. Got the screws holding it in place here. That's the pipe feeling really solid right there. So now all we gotta do is take this hose, measure and cut off how much we need to go to right there. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a spare in case I need to finagle this somewhere else or you know, use it, reuse it somehow. Alrighty, let's see if we can get this on and test it. I love this type of hose because it's it's threaded, uh, so it doesn't or not threaded, but it's it's reinforced, so it doesn't flex very well and doesn't crush, but it's also very, not very flexible for anything. All right, let's wrap this up. Hose is sealed inside. Took a little bit to get it sealed. Had to use some. Um, tape to seal it and then a new um, clamp because the hose itself doesn't flex very much. See you down the trailer.